Anyway, so yeah, as background, um, I graduated in 95, and um, I think there's a lot of questions of why is he talking to me here tonight? Um, and uh, I would be having that same question. Um, when I was graduating, we didn't have Dine with Alums, so I think this is a really positive thing. I think the alumni office does a great job with this. And um, What I want to talk to all of you about is um, some of my experience, some of the things that um, I had coming out of school, um, some of the career advice that I can give you all, uh, particularly if you're in marketing, but or aspiring to be in marketing, but also if um, you have aspirations in any other field. Um, and then I want to give you, like I said in the beginning, um, just an understanding, kind of a frame up of uh, some things that will make you very successful once you get into the work world. I think there's a lot of um, people that go in thinking one thing and it happens to be something else, or they're um, maybe not used to uh, getting into uh, and out of school. Um, but I, I was certainly one of them. You're, you're in school for a while and then you go out, you're all of a sudden blasted in the work world with people who've been in there for 25 years and you're thinking like, what is going on? Like, this is the strangest thing. And it is a different culture. So I think it's important and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that. This is what I usually deal with. We have Black Friday coming up in two weeks, so this is what I'm gonna be uh, trying to referee. It's a Walmart, trying to get a PS4. Um, and I talk to these guys quite a bit. Um, and, uh, and, and I was talking at, at the table here a few minutes ago, but um, you have to learn to talk to all types of people in marketing. Talk to people like this too. But, you know, generally, um, I'm someone who's fairly curious about the world and um, really likes to I think try to understand why things are happening. Um, and part of that is kind of a level of creativity. I think when you look at the way that things um, are, are done and produced, and especially if you're a fan of any kind of advertising or creative or theatrical or if you're a movie fan or really anything, it's really interesting to look into what that message is that they're trying to teach you or to tell you. And I think a lot of what we've done at PlayStation is to try and um, change the way that people think about themselves. And I think it's sometimes an important lesson for all of us too, is that um, I think a lot of times um, you look in the mirror, you look at yourself and it's really it's one way, but people look at you in completely different ways and completely very positive ways that you may not realize. We like to show this a lot too, because this, this slide here, this, this image here shows a lot of the different kind of ways that you can express yourself um, in versions of play. The video that did not work that I was gonna show you is about play and how I think all of us need to do more both in work and in kind of your personal life about just kind of playing and enjoying kind of the world around you. So that's certainly what we do at PlayStation. So I'm a graduate. Um, let's show some old photos here. Um, certainly enjoyed my time here. Um, I think one of the things that I really enjoyed um, the most here was the Great Books program, and I would not have said that coming in. Um, I would have said, for, I mean, first of all, first day I came in here, I was like, what is, I, I said, what is going on? Like, this is, this is crazy. I was coming from Dale South High School, and I was like, only eight miles up the road, but it was a world of change, because you're there, you're living on your own now, and you've got a bunch of buddies, and it's a good time, but you gotta be responsible, right? All of you remember this, your first day is freshman year. So, um, I was, um, I was really kind of taken by the Great Books program. I was a marketing major. Um, I was told in my marketing classes, you'll never make it in marketing, true story. Um, and uh, so, um, and I probably wasn't very good back then either, to be honest, but um, the, uh, the, I think what the, particularly the seminar in the Great Books program taught me was um, how to think. And I think for me, that was really important. It wasn't the what to think. I think a lot of schools, and I can tell you, I interview um, kids from Ivy League all the way to JCs and sometimes high school um, when I'm interviewing people at PlayStation and almost universally you get a lot of I know it all because I just graduated and I here is what I know about X and um, that is absolutely not true. The people that succeed the most are the people that have agility, that can change, can pivot quickly, have nimbleness to the way that they think. I think that um, the, the Great Books program here really helps you do that. You're gonna all graduate with an advantage, and you should all know that. So that's something that, you know, when I interview someone from St. Mary's, University of Chicago, there's a couple other schools that do this still, I believe, um, you will see an advantage and you'll know that actually when you get into the world, you start interviewing people too, you'll notice this. 
So my journey, many of you, shockingly, are too young to remember the Niners were good at one time. <laughs> Sad story. Yes, it is. And some of you, the alumni here, thank you, represent it. Um, I worked for the 49ers when I got out of school, out of St. Mary's. I was in their PR department during our last Super Bowl. Maybe our last for a while. Um, but uh, I was in PR, and my boss um, at the time who ended up going up to head up all football and basketball operations at Nike, but he was at the Niners at the time, told me, you'll never make any money in sports. Um, they pay the players first. And there's this thing called, called video games and, and Sony that's kind of emerging. You, and there's this thing that Sega, you, you may want to think about this, make a little money doing that. And it's kind of fun. Um, so I said, all right. So ended up being at the Niners for a couple years, but realizing that for me, um, I was in PR and, and I didn't want to stay in PR. I wanted to actually go into marketing. I wanted to be in front of the camera, not behind it. Um, this is the pivot I was just talking about at this table. You can get out of things quickly when you are coming out of school. Don't feel like you have to stay in your chosen field. Don't feel like you have to abide by your major. Don't feel like you have to be at the company. You can get out quickly. It's years before you get pigeonholed. So don't ever think that. So I was in PR and I said, I'm not really into this as much. I like brand strategy, I like brand marketing. I think that's what I'm gonna get into. So I moved on to selling beer. Um, I went to work at Heiser Bush um, in marketing and uh, was, was a very good job. It was a local uh, marketing position. So I wanted to get a bit more national. Um, so moved on to EA. EA at the time was uh, still relatively small and was growing. Many of you now know it's EA Sports and EA, not many of you play games, play video games, but at the time it was relatively small still and we were growing. So um, I, I wrap all this together to say that, you know, one of the things that I really learned in the Great Books program was this, and that is to challenge assumptions, challenge that kind of foundation, um, and that goes for kind of logic-based arguments, but I can tell you, when you get in a, in a boardroom somewhere and someone's talking to you and they say, do you agree? Don't always just say yes, because the CEO is saying yes. Like, feel free to challenge. You need to be able to say, you know what, I may not accept this, and here's why. Have a good kind of cogent argument about why you may not agree with it. Feel free to express that in that way. Um, here's the signs of the last time, and maybe in a long time that we're gonna see championship in San Francisco, and that was Candlestick Park, which we won't see ever again, sadly. But um, this is, uh, you know, again, that pivot can happen for all of you, and, and certainly something I would encourage. So, a couple of things. So, I think um, you, you hear this a lot. This is popularized a bit now in the Valley, but um, I think this is a line that we should all really kind of start digesting and, and using a lot more. Um, it's okay to, to fail, to make mistakes, and you're gonna make a lot when you get out of school. There's a lot that I can tell you, you you're gonna learn, um, but you need to fail fast. Like, I think some of the things that people get caught up in is they get miserable because they think like, oh, I, I didn't do something right, or you know, my boss said I didn't write this plan correctly, or whatever it is. Don't worry about that. Like, learn from what the mistake was, but get out of it quickly, like get, pivot quick, get out. Um, because that's the way, that's the real way to, to succeed. You're learning, you have to fail, to, you have to, to learn you really have to fail. So you, you gotta get out of these things fast and be able to learn and, and move on. A couple of things that were interesting early in my time at PlayStation, after I left EA, I went over to PlayStation. Um, this was right prior to 9-11. And we had a Navy SEAL game that we wanted to create. So I went down to Coronado and I met with the Admiral in charge of all special forces throughout the world, Admiral Eric Olson. And there were 20 Navy SEALs in the room. I'm 23. And I'm sitting there giving a presentation and uh, saying, you know, we have this game, and keep in mind this is pre 9 11. Um, we want this game to be about Afghanistan, about Cuba, about China, about North Korea. You guys good? And um, the, the silence in the room was for about, it seemed like 10 years, but it was really about probably five seconds, but Admiral Olson said, um, absolutely not, you have to change all that, but, um, but we wanna help you. So we went on to making a very successful um, Navy SEAL project and ended up making a reality show that we ended up airing on Spike, which was a lot of fun. Um, you see a couple of the kids there, those kids turned into SEALs and they actually ended up going over to serve from that reality show, which was actually really interesting. But it all kind of came from us getting out of these, this bad situation very quickly. Believe me, there's 23 SEALs kind of staring you down, not the most pleasant thing in the world. Um, 
but that's uh, that was one of my first kind of jump ins to oh this is uh, I'm not in, not in school anymore. Um, I have to kind of change the way I do things. Um, and then we launched PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 3, all of you were, um, that are in school right now were probably 10 or 11 when this came out. Um, PlayStation 3 was not regarded as a successful launch at all, um, and I was in charge of it, um, and it was something that was very, very difficult. We ended up launching a year later than Xbox. We were uh, $200 more. We had no supply. We had very little games. Other than that, it was super successful. Um, like, we had, it was really, really hard. And... I don't, know, I don't know if I want to say arrogantly, but we kind of went into this thinking we've just come off so much success. Um, we can create ads that don't even really mean anything. And we made really strange things. Like, if you ever get a chance, go back on YouTube, you can check these out. But there's one with like a crying baby, which was this one. We had an exploding Rubik's Cube. We had all these weird things because we were just trying to say, you know what, the power is here, come and get it. And the consumer said, no, we're not going to come and get it. Um, and uh, it was very challenging. It took us like three or four years, and I'll tell you that Sony Corp overall, it was challenging for all of us there too, because this was a very expensive proposition. Um, the founder of PlayStation ended up quitting over all of it. Um, so this was a very tough time, and for me, it was really interesting to learn, because I, I said, you know, I, I was the one kind of trying to put all this together, but I learned that when you go into try to market to someone or try to sell to someone or even try to con communicate to someone, you should communicate to their emotions and then to their logic. You want it, you want it, the best brands live in the heart. So you gotta grab them there. You all have something that you love. Um, some of you love video games, I'm sure. Um, some of you love, they love fashion, sports scene, whatever it may be, sports apparel, whatever it is. Um, but you love that brand because of how it makes you feel. Um, and then you like it because you, you like to run and, Nike shoes or whatever it might be. So that's how we started changing things. And um, so we first had to establish what we were for because you always want to have kind of that foundation of who you are. What do you, what do you stand for? So we're for gamers. We moved on to um, try and reach into what everybody wants to be. Everybody wants to be great. But how can you, how can you communicate that in a way that makes people feel like it's a journey. We, we looked at it as kind of in, um, if you're, you're all probably Star Wars fans, in Star Wars terms, like the Yoda, like the, someone needs to lead you to this understanding. So we were saying like the greatness in everybody can be extracted, but you have to kind of hit them in the heart um, and do that in a way that, that they feel like it matters to them. And I'm gonna show you an ad that we did do that and it just so happens to be Star Wars last year. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. And then we established PlayStation 4 is the best place to play. So we, you can see how these things change. Like we, we failed, I failed, and took the crying baby and exploded Rubik's Cubes and turned them into um, some of the, I think, most foundational and emotional um, creative that, that we've seen certainly in my industry and now we're starting to see even in theatrical and, and in studio work. It was, it's very, very good and it, and it really worked. Um, so, you know, we're really doing well in the market now. A lot of that's because we're reaching into that heart and making sure we tug the heartstrings first. Do a lot of this. Um, at the Super Bowl last year, um, if you were driving around anywhere in the Bay Area, you probably saw this, but um, this was the ad that we ended up running. Um, so you can see just little, like, just humor and, and creative and doing things that I think people don't expect um, really can resonate well. So we ended up with the PS4, and we actually launched a new PS4 today, as a matter of fact, why I was almost late to this, um, to this session, um, a 4K PS4. But uh, in this case, you can see how the graphics have changed, um, and we've gotten to a point now where um, my wife will come in and say, what, what race are you watching? And you end up going, oh, I'm playing the game. That's really the game. So I'm gonna try and do this now. Let me see if I can show you um, the spot I wanna express here.
differences between that and crying babies in Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> Many of you are going to feel like throwing your chair through a window when you get your first job, I'll tell you that right now. So, um, I want to go through a few things, just kind of what I've framed up for advice. So bear with me on this, but these are the kind of the top 10 things that I hear from uh, people just like you that are coming in to interview. And also people in their first maybe two or three years out of school. And I thought this would be helpful for all of you because these are things I wish I had known, to be quite honest with you. Um, so I'm gonna um, go through this and afterwards, if any of you have questions on these things, please ask because there's things in here that I'm sure you're gonna say, well, I'm not sure what that is. You will know in about two years what I'm talking about. But um, first of all, I, I like this quote because it's John Wooden. Um, and I think you, you always wanna prepare. That's the first thing. So people, a lot of people come into their first job and I have had plenty of people that I work with that come in um, either out of grad school or undergrad and they're like, I'm good, I'm, I'm a CEO in about three years, right? And, uh, or I want your job in about five, and I'm li I like that. I like it when people say that, but it's not done out of kind of talent, it's done out of arrogance. So you don't wanna, you don't, <laughs> don't say that unless you're prepared. So here's, here's some things that I wanna just kind of go through for you. First one is um, be proud of what you're doing. Like be proud that you're graduating, but put it up on the shelf and keep moving because there's plenty of people that are, um, have been in the work world for a long, long time and may even have a grad degree. They're gonna be doing the same job you do and you gotta kind of get that and put your, your college years here, be very proud of them and keep moving. You're gonna be in good shape. I'll tell you, coming from St. Mary's, you're gonna be in good shape just kind of with what you have up here, but just remember, keep moving. Second thing is, picture yourself in 40 years. Again, like I, I think one thing that people get locked into is that they have to stay at one company and they're gonna be there for the next you know, 40 years or 50 years, and they're just, the world's over if they don't like their boss. I'm gonna tell you, not, we don't always like our bosses. Um, I've had plenty where I'm just like, yeah, this is not gonna work. But if you stick it out, or if you don't stick it out, you can leave. But just look, kind of have a goal, have a direction, figure out where you wanna be. It doesn't have to be the job, and it doesn't have to be the boss, and it doesn't have to be the company or the industry. Just know where you're going. I was interviewing here when I got out of school, uh, or was getting out of school, and an unnamed company here um, during the interview process said, where do you want to be in, in 10 years? And I was like, I want to be the head of marketing for a major brand, and they laughed. Not, not a good response. So, you, but remember in your head where I, want to, where I want to be in 40 years. Ask a lot of questions. This is a big, big deal. You don't know it all. You're not going to know it all, and don't feel like you have to. You're going to come into a, a work environment with people that are doing this every day. And you're gonna to need to make sure that you ask questions and they're smart questions. Every question generally is a good question, but um, you, know, you wanna make sure you just continue to learn. That's that learn, and you're gonna fail and you keep learning, just keep learning. Um, I really strongly recommend that you intern. This is something, it's starting to catch a little bit more um, kind of fire in culture right now, which is good. For a long time, because I was coming to Diamond Alums maybe even up to three years ago, people were like, oh, I haven't thought about interning yet. I said a couple of you I'm talking to, it sounds like you're starting to do that. If you haven't, do it. You need to intern. It doesn't matter in the industry necessarily, but own a project or learn a skill like communication, collaboration, or business acumen. Learn something like that. You'll have a lot more to offer when you get your first job. It really, really matters, so make sure you do that. Um, fifth one, <laughs> find people that'll help you. Um, you really need to look at this as a team approach. So whether you have a mentor, I had someone with the Niners that I mentioned that I really um, used and, and felt like could really help me. Um, but team up with people. Um, you know, it's, I think the, the big thing for all of you is to remember that um, you want to be around good people. So good people that will help you. So remember that. Um, sixth one is don't be the last one in, the first one to leave. No one's counting hours, I can tell you. But I just let someone go recently uh, because she thought it was cool to come in at 11 and leave at 3. And uh, everyone else is there working 12 hours. Not okay. So, you know, look at the culture of where you're going. But just don't make a big show of being last one in, rolling in. And, um, certainly don't come in hungover. Don't do that. Um, 
Seventh one that I like to talk about is figure out how you can best help at work and also others in your life. I think this is a big one. You need balance in your life, so don't feel again, like even if you're not the first one to leave, but you end up going home, have a life, have a personal life, enjoy your time, help people, but help people at work primarily because you wanna actually lift people up. And I think there's a lot of people, you'll see this, if any of you work in the Valley, I work in the Valley, um, you will see a lot of people that try to beat you up and you're gonna get a lot of this and they're gonna try to shove you down. Don't be that person. Like you don't wanna be the person that's shoving people down, constantly making people feel bad. Um, make sure that you're, you're helping. So the eighth one is pay attention to details. This is a big one. Um, a lot of people just kind of cruise on through and don't really pay attention to really anything. And then when the CEO does come and ask for your opinion, you're kind of like, I don't know, what do you think? And he says, X, and you go, I agree. Um, you may not have to agree if you look at the details. So make sure you're paying attention constantly and ask those questions. It's really, really critical. Number nine, do what I'm doing. You gotta speak publicly. This is, not many people understand this, this one, but the fastest way to rise up in any organization is to be able to speak. Um, last month I spoke in front of 6,000 people at the GameStop Star Manager Show, and it was bigger than the town I grew up in. 6,000 people, I couldn't even see the back wall. Um, so many people at this convention center. Learn to speak publicly. You're gonna, and, and it doesn't have to be standing up on a stage like this or the mic or trying to mess with a Mac here. No, you don't have to do any of that. Just, if you can stand in a boardroom or you can stand in front of your boss even, be able to talk, be able to say, put, put your logic and your arguments together, it's so, so important. We move people up rapidly when they learn how to do this. So we send people to Toastmasters, we see how they, what they learned out of undergrad, learn to speak publicly and feel confident doing it. And the last thing, the biggest thing I think, is take initiative. I'll give you a story on this. Um, uh, we were in the middle of a big hardware launch about 10 years ago, not the PS3, but um, my, I went down to see my boss, and my boss's vitamin water was still just sitting on her desk, and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird, but she just didn't leave that there. Well, she had been fired. So um, I went down to her boss, my new boss, and I, and I said, you know what, I want what she was doing. I want that. And he goes, cool, that sounds good, you got it. So. Um, that's, it's, it's not always that easy, but what I tell people that come into my office, they're like, you know what, there's this thing over here that I want to do, or I see this opportunity over there. Here's an option you may not have thought of, because I'm certainly someone, I raise my hand, I'm like, I don't know it all, so if you see things, let me know. If they come in and do those things, I'm like, yep, you got it, that's yours. And many times you succeed at that, you're going to move up fast. So really do that. I think it's really, really critical to, to kind of take that initiative. Don't feel like you, you don't have the skills to do that. Feel like you can go in and, and take charge. So I wanted to show you those 10 because I think there's a lot of things when you come out of school and you see the memes and it's like, dream big and like everything's possible. And all this. I, those don't mean anything. Like, look at what this is. Take this advice and I'm telling you, you'll do well. Don't look at things of like, everything's great. It's not, you, you want to, you want to, I think, when you get out of school, there's a reality check quickly that happens, and you're going to be just fine, and you're going to all succeed in your, in your many, many ways, but do these things, and you'll be in good shape.